Okay, welcome to part two for Ready Lesson 5 for seventh grade. We're going to be doing parts three and four of the lesson. So let's look at part three. It says, after guarding the boy, Bill speaks with Sam before they write the ransom note. Continue reading, then answer the question that follows. So let's read. You know, Sam, says Bill, I've stood by you without batting an eye in earthquakes, fire, and flood, in poker games, dynamite outrages, police raids, train robberies, and cyclones. I never lost my nerve yet, so we kidnapped that two-legged, skyrocket of a kid. I'll be back sometime this afternoon, says I. You must keep the boy amused and quiet till I return, and now we'll write the letter to old Dorset. Bill and I got paper and pencil and worked on the letter. Bill begged me tearfully to make the ransom $1,500 instead of 2000 I ain't attempting, he says, to decree the celebrated moral aspect of parental affection, but we're dealing with humans, and it ain't human for anybody to give up $2,000 for that 40-pound chunk of freckled wildcat. I'm willing to take a chance at $1,500. You can charge the difference up to me. So let's look at what the closed reading says. It says, underline at least two details that help you understand Bill's feelings about the boy. So if we look, we can see a couple of ways that he feels. First, we see that it says, I never lost my nerve yet until we kidnapped that two-legged skyrocket of a kid. So I'm going to take my underline tool. I'm going to underline that. This is already showing that he's lost his nerve, which means that he's starting to lose it. This kid's obviously a troublemaker. In the next uh, two paragraphs down, it says, Bill begged me tearfully. So this right here shows as well what Bill feels like. He's begging tearfully. And then finally, in the last paragraph, it says, It ain't human for anybody to give up $2,000 for that 40-pound chunk of freckled wildcat. So this right here shows that obviously this kid is poorly behaved. And Bill feels that he's poorly behaved. So let's go down to the question. The hint says, look for text evidence suggesting that Bill thinks a $2,000 ransom is too much. So it says, circle the correct answer. Why does Bill want to make the boy's ransom $1,500 instead of $2,000? So A says, he knows the boy's father won't be able to afford the $2,000 ransom. B says, he believes it's morally wrong to ask for any ransom at all. C says he thinks the boy is so difficult that his parents might not want to spend much money to get him back. And D says he worries that Sam will get nervous and back out of the plan if they ask for too much money. Now let's go through these answer choices. Now A, A doesn't really make any sense because the text doesn't say anything about the boy's father not being able to pay the ransom. So A is most likely not our choice. B says that he believes it's morally wrong to ask for any ransom at all. Well... That doesn't really make any sense, because wouldn't it also be morally wrong to kidnap the kid? Um, Bill has no problem with charging $1,500 for ransom. So this doesn't really make any sense at all. Uh, C says he thinks the boy is so difficult that his parents might not want to spend much money to get him back. Now, this doesn't make sense, especially with the last thing he says up here. He says it ain't human for anybody to give up $2,000 for that 40-pound chunk of wild, uh, freckled wildcat. So this does kind of make sense with what he's probably thinking. And then D... It doesn't really make any sense because Sam has not expressed any reservations about the plan or the ransom amount. So this doesn't really make any sense at all. So this means that our best answer choice is going to be C. Let's move on. Part 4. Read about the unexpected notes Sam and Bill receive in response to their ransom request. Use the study buddy in the close read to guide your reading. So let's go ahead and let's read. From the Ransom of Red Chief by O. Henry. Gentlemen, I received your letter today by post in regard to the ransom you ask for the return of my son. I think you are a little high in your demands, and I hereby make you a counter proposition, which I am inclined to believe you will accept. You bring Johnny home and pay me $250 in cash, and I agree to take him off your hands. You had better come at night, for the neighbors believe he is lost and I couldn't be responsible for what they would do to anybody they saw bringing him back. Very respectfully, Ebenezer Dorset. Great pirates of Penzance, I said. Of all the impudent... But I glanced at Bill and hesitated. 
He had the most appealing look in his eyes I ever saw on the face of a dumb or talking brute. Sam, says he, what's $250 after all? We've got the money. One more night of this kid will send me to the bed in Bedlam. Besides, being a thorough gentleman, I think Mr. Dorset is a spendthrift for making such a liberal offer. You ain't going to let the chance go, are you? Tell you the truth, Bill, says I. This little you lamb has somewhat got on my nerves, too. We'll take him home, pay the ransom, and make our getaway. We took him home that night. We got him to go by telling him that his father had bought a silver-mounted rifle and a pair of moccasins for him, and we were going to hunt bears the next day. It was just twelve o'clock when we knocked at Ebenezer's front door. Just at that moment, when I should have been abstracting the $1,500 from the box under the tree, according to the original proposition, Bill was counting out $250 into Dorset's hand. So let's look at what the study buddy says. It says, will the boy's father agree to the terms of the ransom note? I'll underline sentences that tell what he thinks of the kidnapper's demands. So right here they underline, you're a little high in your demands. You bring Johnny home and pay me $250 in cash. So obviously the boy's father did not agree to the terms. So let's look at the closed read. It says, find and star the sentence in the letter that suggests how the boy's neighbors will feel about his return home. So... Let's go ahead and I'm going to choose the star tool and I'm going to find and star that. Now, you can see that the neighbors are mentioned in Ebenezer Dorset's letters. So right here it says, you better come at night for the neighbors believe he's lost and couldn't be responsible for what they would do to anybody they saw bringing him back. So right here, this shows what the neighbors feel uh, about his return home. Notice, they say that the neighbors are probably not going to act very kindly to whoever's bringing this boy back, which means they probably like the fact that he's gone. Uh, so this right here really definitely shows that this boy obviously is a terror. In the next close read, it says, which phrases in paragraphs 4 and 5 are clues that tell you how the two kidnappers feel about Ebenezer Dorset's offer? circle these words and phrases. So I'm going to take my circle tool and let's go to paragraphs four and five. Now at the end of paragraph four it says Mr. Dorset is a spendthrift for making us such a liberal offer. So right here by saying it's a liberal offer uh, that means that it's a good offer. And in paragraph five it says this little ewe lamb has somewhat gone on my nerves too. So this right here this sentence uh, this shows that they're so fed up with him that they will they would be willing to pay to get rid of him as well. Okay, so now let's go on to the questions for guiding practice. Go ahead and pause your video and try to answer the questions yourself, and then come back so that we can go through them together. So let's look at number one. It says, which statement best explains the reaction of the narrator, Sam, to Ebenezer Dorset's counter proposition? Is it A, Sam thinks the counter proposition is a joke and refuses to take it seriously? B, Sam thinks the amount of money Ebenezer asks for is unfair and he convinces Bill that they should pay a lesser amount? C, at first Sam is happy about the counter proposition, but then he gets angry again and asks for even more ransom money? Or is it D, Sam is angry about the counter proposition, but then Bill convinces him that it's a greater offer since the boy is so horrible? Well, going back into the text, we notice what we underlined is that it was a liberal offer. It was a good offer. And he says, I think it's a liberal offer. And so I is, uh, is Bill. So, uh, I'm sorry, Sam. So... Uh, the narrator is obviously agreeing that it's a, a good proposition. So um, Bill uh, is our narrator, and Bill is convincing him it's a good offer. So in this case, Sam, while he's angry about the counter proposition, Bill is convincing him that it is a greater proposition. So this would be our best answer choice. So I'm going to go ahead and take my circle tool. Excuse me. Take my circle tool. And... There we go. 
Okay, so number two. By the end of the story, the terms of ransom have changed dramatically. Which sentence from the story best shows who sets the final terms of the ransom? So A says, I received your letter today by post in regard to the ransom you asked for the return of my son. B says, you bring Johnny home and pay me $250 in cash, and I agree to take him off your hands. C says, Sam, says I, what's $250 after all? And D says, tell you the truth, Bill, says I, this little you lamb has somewhat got on my nerves too. So the question is asking, who has set the terms of the ransom? Okay, so who is the one who made the final, you know, terms of agreement? And in this case, it was Mr. Dorset who said, no, you're going to bring him back and you're going to pay me $250. And that's what ended up happening. So the answer choice B would be the best option. You bring Johnny home and pay me $250 uh, in cash, and I agree to take him off your hands. Finally, we have number three. It says Sam and Bill initially wanted $2,000 ransom for the boy. Explain why Ebenezer Dorset was able to convince the kidnappers to pay him $250 to take back his own son. Cite at least one direct quote from the story to support your explanation. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, um, to answer this as an example answer. Now, Ebenezer Dorset says, and I'm going to go ahead and put my direct quote right away. You had better come at night for the neighbors believe he was lost and I couldn't be responsible for what they would do to anybody they saw bringing him back. This phrase from Dorset's counter proposition supports the idea that no one would willingly pay to take back such a troublemaker. Okay. So this is my answer. So, in the end, um, the question said, explain why Ebenezer Dorset was able to convince the kidnappers to pay him $250 to take back his own son. Now, um, in the text, it says that the neighbors obviously did not like this child and that they would harm anyone who would bring the child back. And so, or it insinuates, it implies, you can infer that they would probably harm someone who would try to bring this child back. And so, based off of this, uh, it supports the idea that no one would ever, <laughs> no one would ever want to pay to take back such a terrible child. Okay, so now that we've done parts three and four, you're going to go ahead on your own and you're going to read part five from Dusk, and then you're going to answer questions one, two, three, and four independently.